This is Happy Catastrophe with a paint spot on her wrist cuff there. <laughs> I have several sweatshirts that I enjoy painting in and they all eventually get paint on them but they're my cozy sweatshirts here in my cold cabin. Just get on with the video. Okay we're gonna put Goody Tama aside today because I want to talk uninterrupted. Shh. I am Candace um, otherwise also known as Sister Min Bao and I have a different sort of video for you to do today. <laughs> I have two books that I am considering project books. And they are a little bit different be than your typical project books because, um, well, I don't know if there is a typical project book. Let's just talk about them. Um, I enjoy sitting here and coloring every evening in my cabin with me and Jack, who is behind me on the couch and I sit on the floor at my coffee table here in color. And I love to think of you all here with me. So I'll often turn on your YouTube videos and watch them. And it's like you're right here with me. But I wanted, I have a couple of books that are very near and dear to me. And I wanted to feel like you were coloring with me even more than I do. So um, I have an idea. I would like to work in both of these books with anybody who'd like to work in them with me. Uh, many. This is an older book, and many of you are picking it up now, and we'll talk about that one because I think I first want to talk about Alien Worlds. So let's talk about this crazy idea I have and see if you'd like to join me. Okay, starting with Alien Worlds. Uh, many of you are longtime friends, and you know that I love this book. You also know that I mangled the cover in my work bag. I'm so sad about that. It gets banged up in my work bag. I now wrap my books in towels <laughs> before I put them in my bag to take them to work. But um, wow, look at what I've done to this. Anyway, this book is special to me because at the time, Kirby did not have, Kirby Rosanis is the uh, author of these books, and he did not have a plan to come out with any more. So he was taking a hiatus for a while. So this was sort of like what I thought sort of his swan song because it is incredibly intricate and incredible vision. This book takes place in alien worlds. Duh, go away. And um, it is the story of you or a person as an astro, as a space explorer going through and visiting all these different worlds. And in the back, every page has a story. And it tells, so you start here at the Lost Paradise, which is our first planet. And we go to the luscious landscape there on that planet. We see our solar powered giant. We see an apex predator. We see a forest intelligence and a flowers dweller, flower dwellers, all on this lost paradise planet. Then we get in our ship and we fly to the next planet, the floating world. So these are little bits too that give us little hints about what we're looking at. When I opened this up, I had seen a couple flip throughs. When I opened it up and started flipping through it myself, I realized how special this book is and that Kirby really went to great lengths to create this and this huge expanse of imagination that he has. And I just was struck with not only the quality of the images and the detailed Im intricacies of the images, but also Kirby's vision. And I thought, I've never seen a book like this. So I stopped watching flip throughs and I stopped flipping through my own. I only got about a third of the way through. And I decided that I was gonna start at the beginning and not look ahead and, and pretend I am this explorer and I'm coming across these things for the, uh, for the first time too. And as I started coloring in this book, I started with, you know, just the first pages. And I mostly use my Tim Holtz Distress Inks in here pretty much exclusively. This was some gel pen. I do, uh, in some pages, I have some pencil helping to bring in the shadows, but mo yeah, mostly it's all uh, just, it's, a, it's that paint medium. It's the, it's the Tim Holtz Distress no, not Tim Holtz distressing. Tim Holtz, Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. Sorry, the watercolor pigment sticks. That's what I use a lot. And I will be coming out with a video, a short video soon showing how I use them in here. 
but that's pretty much all I use. So I just started doing this and then I'd show them on my finished pages and then I'd, you know, do another one. Here's another one, the Books Belongs to page. Again, with just the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils, that's all this is. This one has no other colored pencils, it's just those. I made it look very 70s retro colors. And then, you know, we go here. And as I'm showing these pages, I'm starting to get people interested in what I was doing. Um, and after about, I got tired of doing the contents. I wanted to get to some meat, so I skipped that one. I did this one. This was mostly in actually acrylic paint and acrylic paint pen because I wasn't exactly sure uh, what to do with this. Um, although all of the rocks and the, um, ship itself are still the watercolor pencils of Tim Holtz. Um, and, but this is acrylic paint and so is this background. And then there's some metallic uh, acrylic paint in there. And as I pretty much got to hear, Tammy Colors too reached out to me and she's like, I'm really liking this idea and I wanna do it too with mine. Can I join? And I was like, well, yeah. Heck yeah, that'd be really, really fun to color this with you. So she decided to kind of start on the, uh, where I was at the moment, which is the, the following page that I'm gonna show you. Um, but she's, and she will eventually do these pages that she has missed. But what this is, is there's no specific page any month. There's no time frame. There's no deadlines. Some month I work hard on it and get like a huge double page spread like this done. And some months I don't work on it at all. And same with Tammy, there's no pressure whatsoever. And we talk on Instagram direct messaging and we show each other our progress. We ask each other's opinions on things. And we talk about, yeah, you know, this is the luscious landscape. So I'm, you know, as I, throughout the, all of the pages for this planet, I wanna make it all the same palette, which was what I was doing too. So when I got to, to the next one, I made it the same palette using the same colors. I had to go back and look and see what I did to my solar giant here to make them similar here. And, um, and she's doing the same. So she started with her solar giant. She's working on it now and her progress is phenomenal. Her solar giant is striking. Wait till you get a chance. Wait till you see it. When she finishes it, she'll show it one of her finished pages. It's gorgeous. But there's, and, I, and right now I'm working on the Apex Predator. Uh, mostly got him based here and uh, with, I mean, again, it's the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils and that's all this was. Um, I do, I do then, I didn't feel like the shadows were showing up as much. So I went through with a little bit with Faber, uh, with my polychromos pencils and just kind of just darkened some of the shadows just to give it a little bit more definition because these pages are so busy, but like the beast itself is all watercolor pencils. There's no... There's no actually polychromos on top. I try to make these as easy as I can. So I, I don't, there's no rules, but I think perhaps, um, but we're going through it as if we're the journeyer, right? So we're not jumping ahead and doing another page. And we both know this is the next page because we were working on this one and you can see it, but neither one of us have flipped to the next page. So if I get done with this, before Tammy does. I probably won't share um, share progress picture pages with pictures with her until she gets to that page because we're just sort of traveling this together. Now, but there's again no pressure. So I may finish this and move on to the next one and she won't she'll still be working here and we'll talk about this page because we can both see it, but we, I won't talk with her about this next page and she can choose to watch my finished pages or not. Um, I'm sure, you know, we'll, we'll be sneak, we'll be pe getting peaks ahead of the next one, but we're not jumping clear down in here. We're going to go through this whole planet together and then we'll move on to the next planet. And, you know, may, and it's up to her or her comfort lover whether she wants to see the next page or not. I have, I had an accidental peek and I kind of know what the next one is, but I'm not really sure. I just, I also read the blurb on it. So I know the next two are the last two pages for this planet, which has this particular uh, greens and blues. And I'm using the same four or five pencils, watercolor pencils for all of this so that the colors really jive. 
Um, I'm looking forward to getting to another planet and have a whole new color palette. But this has been so much fun because for me, it's like, oh, I landed and I got to color all this. And then I'm like, what am I gonna see next? And then I turn the page and oh my gosh. And I read the blurb on it, found out what it does, how it eats and how it, you know, survives. And I colored it. And then I read the blurb on this one and it survives by disguising itself as a flower and it's the top of its food chain. So I'm making it look, I'm gonna be coloring these flowers exactly the way its head looks so that he can blend in with these flowers. Um, but lots and lots of fun. Now, I don't know if this, if, if anybody else is interested, there's probably only, a, I don't know if anyone else is interested in working through this entire book like this, but if you are, please reach out to me and you can join our Instagram group. I think this one will be small enough that we can just have a few folks just working through the book together and we can have a little Instagram group that, um, about this book and just talking about it and working our way through the pages. Um, you don't have to be here. Of course not. You can be anywhere. Except if you're ahead, I might not want to see your page yet because I want it to be a surprise. For me personally, when I turn this page, I want it to be a surprise of what I see next as if I am that explorer and boom, there's something new. So that is one project book. No timelines, no deadlines, no stress. Um, you can put it aside for months and then come back to it and still be part of our little group. So yeah, instead of a hashtag, this one's gonna be just a little group as we get excited about what we see next. So if you're interested, yes, DM me or leave a message here. Sometimes it takes me a bit to get to my comments on the YouTube videos, but you can always direct message me. That kind of gets my attention faster. And um, I would be happy to add you to my group with Tammy Colors too. And so that's Alien Worlds. Now. My other book that I want to do is Dreamweaver. Now, it was Doodle Robot who first, most recently brought this all to our attention that it was available again. And it was on Amazon. This is a fantastic book. Look at that cover, isn't it pretty? Olivia Whitworth has a really, really neat vision. And this is a lovely book. And we're actually gonna go through this book so that you can see it. It is available off and on on Amazon. You may be able to find it on eBay, um, but I found it for a really good price on Amazon and there was like one left. And then I noticed it was there again, there's one left. So maybe there's someone who's selling these. It was printed in 2016. So it's an older book, but it seems to be becoming available again. The paper is great. It is really and i'm going to pull you out because most of them are double page spreads but they're really her style is really big and open and um really available to any sort of medium um it's a story as well but in this one i don't feel so compelled to go beginning to end now i i will because that's just how my brain works go beginning to end with her um, but you don't have to. And I think this one might be lend itself more to be a hashtag. So um, I'm going to create a hashtag and put it here. And that's going to be the project for this book. Um, I think I might even do update videos just on this book and like my coloring the like my hashtag color the tarot where I keep a running reel of people's pages. If you use this hashtag, um, I'm going to I'm making this up right now, but it sounds really good. Make another reel like that and have a running reel with the update videos I do on this book. It may not be monthly. Um, but every so often I'll do an update on how we're doing on this book and show all the pages that everybody has colored out of this book. Now, the reason I'm picking this book is because when Doodle Robot flipped through it, and then I looked at other flip throughs as well, um, I really saw that this book was a very dreamy book. I mean, it is literally called Dreamweaver. <laughs> Duh, but it is, um, it's also extremely peaceful to the viewer. And as I felt it as Doodle Robot flipped through it, and then I, I immediately ran and purchased this one and got it off Amazon. And then I found it to be the same for myself, just sitting here flipping through it in real life, 
that this book brought me a lot of peace and comfort. And you have this woman here who I love that she is like the same size as so many of us. And she is having these dreams. And from what I understand, where did I get that? Uh, was that in the back? No. Her cat. She has a cat. And her cat's rather magical and leads her. There's her cat. And she ha the cat is fun to find in every single page. So the cat... And these are all little snippets of the dreams that she's going to be getting into. The cat leads her into the dream world. So here it is. A starry night, a sleepy woman, a curious cat. As she drifts off to sleep, the adventure begins. So this might be, I probably won't color this page first, but who knows. Um, through the oceans, across the skies, amongst the trees, follow the cat through the land of dreams. So that's the premise for this book. And there are all kinds of things to see as she dreams. And she starts off in her room just falling asleep. And what's interesting is the things that are in her room are things that will pop up later. Take note of the pictures on her wall. Those characters will pop up in her dreams later. She's, you know, she kind of gives the impression that she might be tossing and turning a bit here. All those pictures are things that will pop up in her dreams later. There's uh, her dress set out for the next day. More pictures of things that will pop up. It's nighttime, she's getting ready to fall asleep. And that's her house. And there's her kitty. So the kitty's awake, because kitties are nighttime creatures and like to cause all kinds of mischief at night. So again, you could color any page, anytime, anywhere, any order, whenever you want. Put this, put this hashtag, which I'll put here again, um, I, the reason I'm not saying it out loud now is because I need to go research and make sure I can find a hashtag that isn't being used and just one that will work out good for all of us. And then just post it. And it'll feel to me, as, as we get a little community going, it'll feel to me like you're here coloring with me. And I'm excited about that. So this page looks like some wind has come through. Curtains are blowing. Lamps are gonna being knocked over. And she's, she really is tossing and turning now. And her world is kind of getting topsy-turvy, and she's being pulled into this dream where of water. It looks like there might be lightning coming down. It's a stormy, stormy sea. And her kitty is noticing the dream, and he's about to jump in. So see... I think almost all of the pages are double spreads because it is they're telling a story. But there's a lot of space. I mean, this wouldn't take that long to color. Um, it is double-sided, so you can't use your alcohol markers. Darn. But the paper is good enough, thick enough, that you could use acrylic or... See how thick that is? Water medias, as long as you're careful with the water. You could use watercolor paint. You could use inks. You could use pan pastels back here or gelatos or some sort of oil oil based gel stick um you know if you don't want to use pencils in this big expanse stuff you might want to use pencils in here um i don't use pencils a whole lot because of my arthritis so i find other things but I, I can think of all kinds of mediums i could use as crayons are great um and then you turn the page she's still dreaming and she's still not settled in her sleep and she's dreaming of this, here's a boat who is, several boats who are in this very stormy sea, but there's a lighthouse there ahead. The sun is starting to come up in her dream. These fishermen in these boats, right? And the cat is jumping in. So the cat is going to lead her. Now, these, this is a foreign book. They always like to put little cat butts. I don't know what the obsession is with the little hole there. <laughs> you don't see that in Western books or American-made books. We don't, like, obsess about the little butt thing. I kind of think it's cute, though. <laughs> so I kind of like it. All right. But in Eastern books, you'll see it, like, in... Korean, Japanese. Uh, this was printed in London, or printed in China, but it's the publishers in London. London. Um, 
So I don't know. It's it's not. This is not a Korean or Japanese book. But we like the little buttholes. <laughs> so here we are. And she's dreaming, but her dream self has left her body. And here she is going into the dream. So she's actually jumping in the water. Here she is. And she sees the fish. She's with the fish and the nets. She's Ooh, she could be on the water or under the water. See all the fish and the nets? And look, the fisherman's throwing the nets out to catch the fish, and the cat is in the boat. Now, one thing you will see in this book is that the cat is always ahead of her, and she's sort of following the cat, chasing the cat. Whatever your interpretation of this is, the cat is taking her further into her dreams. I love this page. And the cat, you can see throughout the book, can fly. You can go underwater. He's pretty magical. So she's like, her dream has been filling her room. So it starts here, and she's here. And then it's getting bigger. And, she, and her room is getting smaller and smaller. And her dream world is getting bigger and bigger. And here, this is all that's left of her room. Her dream world has really taken over. And look at this this magnificent jellyfishes. Look, there's her little feet. Isn't it great? It's such a great concept. But the dream, I mean, no words, and you can tell what's happening here. And now she's in the boat, and the kitty's in the water, and he's chasing fish because kitties like fish. And here she's reaching down. Uh, she could be reaching for the cat. She could be just looking into the water, wanting to touch a jellyfish. This could be, you know, a distraught person trying to get their cat, or it could be someone who's just in the boat now and enjoying the water. The water is still pretty, pretty rough. What a fun page this would be. And here, we're, we're, at a, we're at underneath the water, and we have a wrecked ship, right? And some creatures of the sea and look the kitty is swimming on chasing fish heading towards what i think is the surface up here but you could make it anything you want these her open style of drawing really lends itself to some great interpretations you know i think she's under the water she and this you know maybe this is the this is the shore and the fish are flying i mean whatever you want to make this it's just the interpretations will be so much fun and that's another reason that I wanted to do this as a group buddy because I just want to see what everybody does with these pages I can just see some amazing things done with metallics and paint and all kinds of stuff now this kind of book isn't going to appeal to everyone because it is all double page spreads but it's not a big book and for those of us that like double page spreads we just are a little bit daunted by them because they're always so much this isn't so much you can you can get this one done here she's made it to the shore finally break that open a little bit they do go into the spine but the spine can be broken better than i'm doing it um she's made it to the shore there she is and i know some people who are coloring this and they've gone through I made her bodysuit the same color. I think uh, JoJo Zahanna, her channel, she's doing this, and she's, she's done the bodysuit the same all the way through. And here she sees all these beach cabins. Here's some more of the sea life. Look at that. Under the sea. That's not a lobster. Made me think of them, though. Great sea life. And all this wonderful, not-too-detailed details. And then the cat is again way up there. And, and look, air balloons. So the cat is leading her again to here, to this, to this. And we saw pictures of air balloons on the wall of her bedroom. So this is really neat. The cat is leading her there. Here, they make it to the air balloons. And the cat is way up ahead. Is he looking back at her? Maybe. Maybe he's just looking down at the balloons. And I've always loved coloring air balloons. Now, one thing that's neat about this page is there seems to be this 
see, it's almost like, at first I thought those were reflections, but I guess this is just like, you know, prayer banner or the little peace flags going, and it seems like they're connecting some of the balloons together. And she's climbing into a balloon, once again, following her kitty cat. What a fun page this would be. You could go wild with colors. And they're in the balloons. Now she's in her balloon here and flying over fields, which I think these would be really, really fun to color, all these fields. Look at that. The geese flying along. And the kitty cat is down in there, way down in there. <laughs> he's always just out of reach, you know? She can't quite reach him. But she's following the path that he's leading her on. Neat page, huh? All right, they're still in the balloon, but they're going into new ecosystems. Here she is, and here we get the first picture of her again in her sleep. Now, she looks kind of peaceful now. She's just, she's still curled up in her ball without the covers, but she's, you know, this is a peaceful dream. And she's in her balloon, looking over at the mountains and the forests and her new ecosystem that she's into, and her kitty, who is leaping out of his balloon. He has no fear. And then this beautiful tree branch. This reminds me a lot of the Pacific Northwest where I live. This is almost like the Sierras in California, probably. Um, where I live, all, all of our mountains are volcanic. So sometimes you see them like this because where the plates have crashed together and made these uprisings. But we live with a lot of dead and dormant volcanoes. And then she ends up in a forest, which does look very much like where I live. I live in a cabin in the woods, deciduous rainforest. And I have trees just like all these. <laughs> and there she is coming out of the forest, finding a path. There's a deer, some lovely, lovely deciduousness stuff. And there's the kitty just going out of sight. He's always just so far, you know, you just barely can see him. I would tackle this with gouache in a heartbeat. I would just go to town mixing different shades of greens and try to just give this depth, like the greens that are closer, lighter, and then the leaves that are further away, darker greens. So lighter to darker to almost black back in here to just give it a sense of depth. I'm not into repetition, but this kind of repetition, I'm okay with. It isn't tiny, tiny little leaves, and it isn't tiny, tiny little flowers. It isn't repetition for repetition's sake. It's a forest, and you can do this pretty quickly. Um, those of you that are adept with super colors, uh, the Crayola super tips, sorry, Crayola super tips, and using them like watercolor, that would be really cool. And then she comes out of the forest. And I love the percept I love the viewpoint here. You know, the trees that are very close and the trees that are very far away. She Olivia is extremely adept at giving this sense of depth and distance because this is a journey. And the whole point of it, it seems to me, is that the cat is always out of reach. So she keeps going further into her journey trying to follow the cat. So here she is. She's looking down into the valley. And on this hill, is the kitty cat looking at this fantastic structure like a Chinese palace. The trees are a little different, kind of maple looking here. Yeah, so she's coming out of this deciduous and going into these this different sort of journey here. And here she ends up in the palace whatever sort of building this is, she comes in and the door is massive, right? This is, this again, this perspective of, wow, this huge grandeur and this sense of big and space. Um, I've always wanted to be able to color like this, giving perspective like this, or, or to, excuse me, not color, draw like this and giving some perspective, but um, I've never, ever been good at it or understood it. And the interesting thing I think is in this part of the book is to look 
at the layout of the house because we're going to go through the whole house. The cat is going to lead us and he's up there at the top of the steps. There he is. And there's a door leading somewhere there. And she's looking up at him, so we assume she's gonna follow him up the steps. Again, a very interesting page. I don't normally just go for building pages, but I would have so much fun with this. I really would. What is the artwork there? Yeah. See, some of the artwork you will find in this house is also on her walls. I mean, it's all just interconnected and it's fun to find all the connections. Here she ends up in an arbor arboretum, in a greenhouse, something within the castle, this big structure. And it's full of butterflies and suddenly she finds in her hand a butterfly catcher. And she's in this, so all of this would give you opportunity to make glass, and it doesn't have to be see-through because if it's a greenhouse, it probably wouldn't be. So you could do some sort of really, really pale blue or some kind of white gouache with a tiny tint of color in it, or you could make it all different colors. You could make the sun coming in, wherever you're, like, I don't know how to do that. So I will probably make it opaque um, or maybe even just do like the blue sky outside with just like sometimes I take a white pen and just boop boop make it look like it's glass but I don't know if the ceiling is glass I'm not sure we might still be inside the building but it's up to your interpretation so if we start on this side look at we have a lot of tropical type foliage a lot of green stuff we have a lot it seems like to be like a butterfly house perhaps and we're looking again down a distance and look, Naughty Kitty. Naughty Kitty's on a branch there trying to catch a butterfly. This will be, this would be beautiful. So beautiful to color. Um, this book both settles into a comfort zone for me. And I'm not talking just the, the, the subject matter. What I'm talking about is actually coloring it. Um, I would be comfortable coloring this because it's not too detailed, you know, but I still would be challenged. And I kind of feel like it's not such a precious book and not such a crazy detailed book that I would feel comfortable taking risks, kind of like I am with Lulu Mayo, which this kind of reminds me of her a little bit, is that the way, the easy to draw, the easy to color elements make it so that experimenting is just a little bit more easier for me. It's hard to explain for me, but if something is really detailed and difficult to color, I'm also not gonna experiment with like new mediums and new techniques. I'm just gonna focus on trying to get color on this very difficult element. I'm not gonna challenge myself anymore. But this is, you know, I've colored butterflies. I've colored, you know, these are really cool kind of, um, uh, uh, what would Doodle Robot would call this, um, I'm having a lot of brain fog today, so I'm having a hard time remembering my words. But there is, it's very stylized for one thing. So they could be any color and very easy to color. They could be, you know, realistic or not. It's unclear. Um, I would use different kinds of greens and reddish greens and brownish greens, but, you know, blue greens. Uh, or maybe I might pick a limited palette and do this in a limited palette, which I always find I like a lot. But I would also take some chances. I'd put some shiny stuff where I normally wouldn't. I might play with trying to get light coming in, you know, because I don't, I don't feel like I could really mess this up. I might not come out the way I want it to, but a total failure? No. It's pretty obvious what this is. You can't mess up what this is, no matter what you try to do to it. So I'm looking forward to trying new techniques. This one, look at this. She's now, I feel like she's come in. Maybe she, maybe she, because she went upstairs. Maybe she's gone downstairs to, to, for this. And now she's walking through our former, this was her coming into the room and, and the kitty's leading her out. So I feel like she's going now out the room, out the door. And the kitty has already gone out the door. Boop. Hey, no little butthole there. And uh, look at all this lusciousness. 
more, more lusciousness, but not the same. Like here we have bark, we have some grasses that weren't in the former picture. We have these leaves were there, but this kind of stuff kind of wasn't. So it, it, an opportunity to color some things different. And I love coloring floors like this. Sometimes I make them black and white checkered. Sometimes I like to make them like old tile. Um, so like the edges are kind of brown or sometimes I make them um, more like a colored tile or a white tile with just little hints of shadows. It'd be really fun to do this page. And then again, we got opportunity for light coming in. You could make it kind of dark with light coming in, whatever. Aha. Now, gorgeous gorgeousness. Here she is. And she's now stepped outside into the grounds and you've got uh, irises and you've got this gorgeous tree with all of these leaves and you're looking down in more into the valley and you're seeing more what bushes uh, crops maybe just landscape looks like we've got some rain ahead and the kitty's leading us down this path it's a lot isn't it there's a lot of leaves there some of these you know, there's a lot to color and you can make this as slow and detailed as you want or as quick with like washes of color that you want, excuse me. But for me, this book is all about relaxing and coloring. I don't have to wonder what grass looks like or a path or a fence. This is easy, relaxing coloring. And following her journey for me is just I inter everybody interprets things and sees things differently. For me, she's being led for a reason, and maybe the reason is just to let go of her anxiety and just see things outside of her small room. It's kind of what seemed to me, just it's a dream world, right? Dream weaver. All right, this page is... Oh, I know this is going to be the top five I color. I love this page. She's come into that weather. See, here's the weather that she was walking towards. And so she's coming into the storm, uh, maybe a little rain shower. And she's got these herons or egrets and dragonflies and lilies with what looks like lotus. And there's a boat waiting for her with a little tied to a little dock. Now, where is everybody? Let us see. There she is. Look at that. She's tiny. And she's sitting on the edge of the forest out of the rain, just sort of watching this, this scene in front of her, which is gorgeous. So this page is all about the scene. And she is tiny. Now, where is the kitty? The kitty's in all of them. Do you see the kitty? Did you already see it and I missed it? Huh. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, the kitty is out in the rain, once again being naughty, thinking about jumping onto that lily pad. <laughs> So she's just sitting watching her cat now and she's watching everything, the, 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 the dragonflies, the birds. And both her and the kitty are really, really not, not the focus of this page. It's all this up front. Stunning, huh? Gosh, I just can't wait to see what some of you do with these pages. And here we are even closer. See, that's one thing I love about Olivia Whitworth. We're like journeying and sometimes we're close to things and other things are far away. So now we've crossed over to the boat and we're in the pond. There's Kitty. He made it to the lily pad. I love these sorts of pages that are half underwater and half on top of water. And in Olivia's stylized way of coloring, it makes it easy coloring because these aren't super realistic. I mean, we know that there's some sort of carp or koi and we could color them anything. And then we have another thing I love is the definite break. Um, I have a hard time when there's just a thin line and then I'm like, well, how do I make it look like this is underwater and this is on top? But this is, you know, nothing is also traveling through. So this is opaque on top and this is, so you could definitely, I hope I'm making sense. You can definitely make the top of this look like the surface of water with its rain hitting and its ripples and stuff. And underneath it, 
you know, the color of being underwater. It could be totally different. It could be darker or bluer or greener than it is on the surface. Sometimes when there's just a line and you see like the roots of the lotus going all the way up to the lily pad, it's hard to make it look like where is underwater and where is not. So this perspective of almost kind of looking down, but being also able to a cross section, it's, it, it's a cool page. For some reason, I see pinks in this, but I think because I always see pinks wherever I see lily pads with flowers. And it looks to me like the kitty's playing with the rain. You could say that he's waving to her, <laughs> too. And she's there in her boat. Like, how did I get here? Neat, huh? What a neat page. This book is just, it, again, like the Kirby book, this book is something special. And every now and then a book hits me that's like, oh, that that is special. That's not just fun or cute. It's actually special. Connects with me at like a soul level. Here she is in the boat, but once again, now she's coming into, ah, in the whirlpool and in rough water. She's lost her oar. She's lost her oars, she's oarless, and she's just gonna go over the waterfall. Now let's look for Kitty. Oh, <laughs> Kitty has already made it way ahead of her. And he's just waiting for her to navigate this loose, treacherous pass here. And you have, you know, rocks and you have splashing. This is a very dynamic page, more splashing. Um, again, a stylized whirlpool, and the river looks like it's going down and splashing. Now, is the kitty in the river, or is he on, did the river go by, and the kitty's out of the water? Up to you. I love the trees in this. I love, again, the way she, you know, colors or draws rain. So neat, another dynamic page. I'm really drawn to this page, too. I've gotten to where I like using coloring water. Um, I like to use acrylic paint pens for the foam because it kind of looks like it's standing up off of whatever other medium I used for the water. Now here, we, see, we get to see her dreaming again. And she's, you know, she's tossing and turning a bit because this is a little spooky. She's up here. Oh my gosh, she's gonna go over this waterfall. There she is, no oars, looking down heading over a waterfall. And she's gonna end up somewhere here. And Kitty, Kitty is, do you see where Kitty ended up? Where Kitty is leading her? Oh, Kitty's in the water, swimming. There's his head and his tail. He's already made it down there, so maybe he was not. I don't, maybe he was not on dry land when we saw him before. Maybe he was up in this part. And, poof, and now he's down and he's, he's in the calm of the river. And she's following, whether she wants to or not. Again, here's the edge of her dreams. I like that every now and then we check in with her to make sure she's okay. Sometimes it's hard to grab these pages. They're so thick. And here... Boosh, she's landed underneath the water, and she's landed, boosh, into the water from the, I don't know why I keep wanting to give that, that might be partly my Tourette's wanting to give it, uh, giving it, um, boosh, giving it some sound effects, but we have an under the water scene, and I love this perspective, look at this, their heads are above water, and in typical fashion, we see their bodies clear, because we're underwater too, look at these, now this This guy almost looks like a sea creature, but this looks like freshwater plants, the kelp and stuff, and some freshwater type fishies. But here we are, and these could be leaves, this could be water, could be light. Cool page. Oh, I just want to get into this right now. I'm definitely going to start in this in April. This is right now... This is March, the end of March, 2024, and I'm gonna start calling my first page next month, or maybe even tomorrow. <laughs> Here she is. Um, we're getting now to where we can walk maybe. Maybe it's shallow, maybe she's just floating, but we're out of the danger zone, and we're here. 
um, with the birds and the trees. And I kind of was gonna make it like it was shallow and this was pebbles under the water, if I can. There's also um, what looks like a uh, reflection of trees and stuff in the water. So I'm not sure if I will make this like I could see underwater or if this is like maybe just reflections of clouds or something from up above. Because there is a great opportunity to do reflection in water, which I have never, ever tried to do. And I want to try to do it with this book. And again, there's Kitty. He's made it to the little island. And see, there's opportunities here to do trees differently. You know, this could be one green and this could be different greens. Or, I don't know, it might be fun to do all the trees in pinks and purples. <laughs> And I really think I saw, color, I think Colored by Maya is doing this page right now. I think I saw some work that she's done on this page, which is pretty neat. And then on this island, Doodle Robot, here's your bugs. She's got, is there bugs? And is it like trees? And then just some steps leading up where the kitty is leading her with his little butt, his little butt. And here is all these I mean, this is very surreal. All these tree house, all these, excuse me, bird houses on these trees. There's some great fungi to color. Some of the trees have been felled and she's just sort of hiding, wondering what's going on. Here's all these great bugs up close. Lots of little ladybugs and beetles, different kinds of beetles. And then this random staircase mysterious random staircase. I love that there's a story going along, but there's also opportunities to color different elements in every page. You know, um, this one's got mushrooms where the others didn't. So there's just opportunities to color different kinds of flowers, you know, and different kinds of, we haven't had those leaves before. All right, it's a tree house. It's a tree house. And Kitty, <laughs> Kitty has gone on and is now way up there on a branch looking at kites. But meanwhile, we're over here at this tree house and look, light sources. You could make this dusk and have those light sources or it could be, you know, full on day. But this looks like I would not do every single one of these leaves. <laughs> you can if you want to. <laughs> but I would just do some sort of like distress ink wash over it because really what's important is these lights and I would try to do you know a light treatment so that it looks lighter around them and maybe I would just make this I might even make this well there are kites but I might make it's dark in here where the trees are that's going to be my story it's dark in here so they're going to kind of be darked out with light I'm going to do have fun with these light sources because I don't really care much about all these leaves what that's not fun what's fun is making light glowing on things glowing on off the leaves, glowing off the prayer flags, glowing, you know, off of stuff. That will be fun. And a little house with a pillow outside. Doesn't this look cozy? I want to visit this. It doesn't look like we're staying here long because Kitty's leading us on. To the flags. Here we are. Now, this is magnificent. Look. It's just the movement with the strings and the, this would be so much fun to treat each one of these flags as like a little mini drawing, like a, like a small little accomplishment as you do each flag. And she's reaching up to grab a string. She's up in the trees because she climbed that tree house. And now she's going to grab a string. And so they're above the tree line now. They're above the crowns of the trees. And where is our kitty? Ooh, look at that butterfly flag and the turtle flag. I love it. Our kitty is way out there hanging on to a string. He's already way, again, way ahead of her. And she's following him. Okay, so now we've got the flags. Oh, flags. <laughs> Kites. And we have the opportunity to do this. I would have so much fun with color in here, probably. I mean, it's just signif significant of wind. You know, and you could, it's a frame. It's basically a frame around just this. And so how fun. 
I definitely would want to do something with metallics in there. And she's hanging on to this kite, which is just take, she's again, she's net doesn't seem to be hardly in control on anything in this, in this book. And she's just, and this is, I don't think I told you, but this is a, um, a sewn book. It's uh, actually sewn. So great quality book. Um, fantastic kite there, but she's being blown by all this gusty wind. Meanwhile, Kitty is on a different kite and is flying out over the farms and the trees. There he is in his own kite. Neat, huh? I'm developing my fantastical mind where I could like not see this as clouds, but see this as, you know, in all kinds of colors and stuff. And this would be an opportunity to practice that. I almost would want to do like a palette and incorporate the trees in that palette, but make it not a realistic palette. Okay. And here she is. She is always, this is a cool perspective because we're down low now and we're looking up at her and we're just seeing her front half. So we're not seeing any of her bodysuit. And she's, looks like having let go of her string, she's landing on the ground. Meanwhile, there's a big string from where the kitty was. So we're, we're in the foliage now, kind of looking up at them. Very cool. Very, very cool. And we're also seeing, oh, you know what? That's not a string. You probably saw this before me. That's the ground line. This is like the water scene. And we're seeing below the ground because here's the roots of all of these beautiful, like there's a poppies and different ferns and different kinds of plants. We're seeing the roots. And in the roots, we're also seeing beetles and worms. Look at this. That is cool. I don't think I've ever seen a page. I mean, I've seen, I've, there's pages where there's like a dragon in a well or animals hibernating, but one where there's like, it's rare to see ones like this with beetles and bugs and roots and worms and kitty. That's really cool. So we're just seeing a cross section of terra firma now. And then, so these are also wind socks. Yes, these are wind socks all in a line and another opportunity there. And the way the perspective is, it just gives them movement. And here's another opportunity for color. Now, I don't know if you saw her, but she's actually walking through them. All of these wind socks. She's right there. Just kind of, you know, ah, through all the wind socks. And Kitty, I imagine, is on this page. Do we see, oh, ah, he's in the, he's already made it through the wind socks and he's on the edge of the hill again, looking out over. He's heading towards this grove of trees. Again, it fits in with her dreamy story, but here's an opportunity to color something different, like koi wind socks. For those of you that love bright, fun colors, oh my gosh, this, this, this page will be insanely fun. She comes out, obviously she's out of the wind socks now, and she comes across in this forest like this greenhouse, this large greenhouse, and you have a peacock of which I try to avoid peacocks at all costs because they all seem to be about the same, but this does not look like any peacock I've ever seen, and I think I would have fun coloring these guys. Um, there he is. And you see inside the greenhouse, there are also birds. Oh, maybe this is an aviary. Cause look, there's birds up on nests, big birds on roosts and stuff. They're all in there. So this is probably an aviary of sorts. Oh gosh, we don't want our kitty going in there. And here is, look, some more peacocks. I love the pose of this one. More peacocks, male and female. And in this aviary, now where did our kitty end up to? Our big bad kitty. Is he, oh my goodness, look why he's found a way in. Ah, he's going to go in there with all those birds. What a cool concept this is. Now here you definitely would have an opportunity to color glass because you're looking through and you're seeing through into this aviary. So, um, and the door here is shut. So he's finding the only way in, which is this venting window. He's cracked, that's cracked open. 
but you're seeing things through glass. So that's an interesting treatment. And an empty birdhouse. I like to see that that's closed and doesn't have a bird in a, I mean, not a house, a cage. I like to see that a bird's not in a cage there. Neat, this is a very detailed page. But sometimes, especially if my anxiety is high, one thing I really like to do is just do tiny little details with like a, a pens, you know, little fine liners and stuff. Just, I'm just gonna look at this detail and nothing else. And that's soothing. So let's see if she can catch up with Kitty on the roof. And she did, but uh-oh, look what happened when they went through the venting window up, up above. Kitty or her opened it and all the birds went free. Now, is she trying to catch them? Is she setting them loose? Up to you to decide. But I bet Kitty, a cat coming in through an opening like that would scare all these birds. And look what happened to Kitty. <laughs> Whoops. Kitty's being carried away. <laughs> so is she wanting to grab a bird and ride along with Kitty? Is that what she's doing? Is she going to hop aboard a bird and get carried away? And look at all this. Absolutely stunning. Now, I'm not normally a fan of coloring birds because I get bored. All the feathers, I, you know, it's just the same treatment over and over. But these don't have a lot of feathers. These are still the stylized style of... Olivia's and so pretty easy to color and again I might go wild with the colors on this one because they're kind of fantastical birds aren't they so this is a perspective of us now we've gone to the top of that greenhouse we saw and we're leaving it via bird highway I think and here she is dreaming and now she looks a little bit more cozy doesn't she she's she's doing the whole huggy my blankie thingy doesn't have too much of a upset look on her face but we've checked in with her she's okay so let's go back to her dream and sure enough kitty is being dropped off of what looks like train tracks what <laughs> looks like an oncoming train and she is there watching so let's let's zoom in on this one there she is watching Again, not the focus of the page, but the perspective again is from right up here up close, kitty being dropped off on a train track, birds leaving, and a train coming with this gorgeous bridge. So many, and this lovely hanging foliage. So many beautiful things to color here. Really, really neat. And here comes the train. What's gonna happen? Wow, bam, we're close up to the train. And that's, again, perspective shift, boom, here we are. She has climbed into the train. Now she's on the train ride. And again, this is one of those that's framed, but this time not with wind, probably with like the steam from the train. Um, again, any color in the world you want it to be. And they both have made it onto the train. There's Kitty. Kitty's on the train. And here's your opportunity to color metal or wood however old you want to make this train. It's beautiful. Not a hard page to color. Again, this is this would be fairly easy. I would use some kind of medium that isn't pencil for these big swatches like gouache or probably some kind of um, ink put on with a brush or uh, an oil stick or even, eye, even eyeshadow. I would to, I, eyeshadow would be cool because it would have that glimmery effect to make it look like metal. If you've got some sort of medium that you can quickly cover big spaces, this would be a fairly easy double page spread to do. We say bye to the train, it looks like. Train's going off, and now our girl is sitting here on this, uh, this trestle, taking a peek, watching the train. And it looks like Kitty has jumped off the train over there. But this is a dream, you know, Think perspectives change. And suddenly we find ourselves, gosh, this almost looks like sun going down time, doesn't it? Or moon rising. It'd be fun to make a nighttime scene here. And she's kind of looking out, just sort of being contemplative. Oh, wait, we have the moon and the sun. Yeah, it is almost like sun going down, moon rising, maybe? Or other way? 
and all these wonderful trees. Again, easy trees to color. I mean, you, you know, these are just, I would use acrylic paint, gouache, watercolor, something like that. I love that it gives the, it gives the look of being really detailed, but when you really look at it, this would be pretty easy to color. It's, you don't have to color all these little tiny details. Just varying watercolors or, gosh, I really wanna try my Distress, my Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. They're not Distress. Tim Holtz watercolor pencils on this because they cover big, big swatches like this really easy. And this paper feels very similar to Kirby's paper, except thicker, I think. And um, I bet it would take it really well because you don't use very much water with those. Here we're in a town. We're in some sort of a dwelling with brick and metal and wood. And she has arrived again. She finds herself here somehow. And Kitty is leading us in the door. So here's your opportunity to color glass. It could be stained glass. That would be fun. Metal work, brick. There's again some of our peace flags, our prayer flags. More metal work. Some really cool, I mean, I just see coloring with Kay doing this one <laughs> and all of, you know, all of the reflective stuff. And, you know, she does has such a talent of where to put the shiny. I watched her video on how, on where, she, it was a viewer request on how she decides what elements to make shiny. And I tell you, I watched it twice and I still don't get how she does it. She's some kind of wizard because... She always does just enough and not too much, you know? That's the trick. That's the trick. But it's a fantastic video. You guys need to watch it. Coloring with K. Here's her, her uh, info, and she does a great, nice video on how she chooses what to make shiny. Now we've gone inside. Now this is quite the place, isn't it? Here is, and I love this part, look. There, these the artwork in this building reflects her dreams that she's been on. Like, there's the boat in the water, and I think that's leaves or something. Um, there's the house in the woods, I think. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that sort of reflect, you know, what she saw in her travels. <laughs> I love it that the statue has a leaf right there. <laughs> Boop, no peenies. Um, and then and there's a bust on top of a bust. That's interesting. <laughs> it's this is almost like a like a like a surreal dream. Like and it, it looks like we we now have reached nighttime be again because here's the moon and the stars. So this is a, a dark outside and light inside. And where is our kitty? Here's his little butt going through the next door of course always being so inquisitive and our cats like that like they're so curious and that's why I love that she chose a cat too because a dog would be more like I'm gonna stay by you but a cat's like follow me and I love how all of the artwork is like some of the foliage that she's seen so you could really go back and see how you colored certain things and color them the same here neato and then we get to steps and <laughs> she could be tired. <laughs> she could be wondering what's up there because Kitty's way up here on the steps. I love all these banister railings. And again, more paintings that show there's the fields with crops, there's some water, there's fish, things she saw, there's a cat. There's a, and this is kind of like recapping all that she's seen. The carpeted steps, which get bigger and bigger because we're down here with her. And she's looking up at all of this. There's her air balloons. There's some more fish. There's the trees she saw. All of this artwork is stuff that she has experienced. We've seen it all. Isn't that cool? Fascinating. And then she finds herself on the roof. And we get the opportunity to color roofs. Now, for some reason, I really dig coloring roofs. I don't know why. I guess because they're different materials and that's fun. Like this would be the ceramic stuff, uh, clay, like a clay roof. And, you know, we have, we have probably metal and wood and tile, lots of different ways to color roofs. And then on top of all that, we have clothing that's all different. How fun is that? Hanging in the night sky. Again, we're at nighttime. And they're hanging in the breeze. Long johns. <laughs> no, those are probably like tights or something. And Kitty... 
Kitty is jumping roofs and is down a couple houses from us. But look, the town just goes and goes and goes. And the wind is kind of blowing. Look at all the clotheslines out there. You could put lights in the windows. This would be fun because to make it kind of dark because it's night, but then all these lights, and I don't know why we have our laundry out hanging out at night, but who cares? Fun things to color. And it's raining again, and now we're down in the streets of the town. And I would definitely make this a night scene. We have puddles, we have a wheelbarrow full of something, whatever you want to make it. And she's coming, just coming into this scene and there is mountains, fish and fish. So maybe this is a fish store. Um, I would put, make these all light sources, this, this store that's open and all of these lanterns. I would have so much fun making them look like they're all glowing and everything's kind of dark. And here it says, fish this way and there's kitty with his little butt but it looks like one of those alleys I went to China once and there was alleys where you'd walk down they had a name that I have forgotten um, but these alleys where you'd get food from vendors and it kind of looked just like this and look here's a painting and a boat see everything reflects what she's everything in her dreams, just kind of the way our dreams work, right? They just sort of get a mishmash of memories and significant things that kind of repeat themselves, repetitive elements. And she finds herself in a very confusing sea of umbrellas. And she's trying to, you know, this reminds me of my dreams where I'm trying to walk through something and I can't. <laughs> and so it's just all umbrella tops. So have at it you know do one one day a couple more another day this is nothing you'd ever have to do in one setting it doesn't have to be cohesive it's just this would be one of those pages i just vomit color on the page which is my favorite thing to do and have so much fun now kitty's not having any problems kitty's leaping from umbrella to umbrella but i don't think kitty's had any problems at any time in this book she's been the one struggling to keep up with him so he's way up here I also would have fun doing shiny stuff. I want to see Coloring with Kay do this one. And then we've made it through the rain and the umbrellas, and now we're kind of thick in this alleyway. And I think this is so cool. I have never, ever in my life colored a fish market. I've colored plenty of fish under the sea, but this is fish market. So there's the menu. And look, I would, this would be so much fun to color them. You could make them shiny. You could make them not. Um, you could make it all these different fish, you know, certain colors. So much detail, but the kind of detail I really dig. And there's Kitty, and she's pretty close to him now. Of course, of course he wants to go to the fish market. And hey, there's another cat. That's the first time we've seen a second cat but it is a fish market. Oh, a third cat. Okay. Oh, more kitties. Okay. All the kitties are hanging out at the fish market. And look at all these crabs and big old like red fish and squids and everything. Now I know it's fun to, it's not fun to color dead things, but this is really kind of cool. Don't you think <laughs> this fish market? I mean, I, I think I'd really enjoy coloring this slice of life here. And almost looks like they're like wholesale because they're boxing it all up and stuff. It's probably a fish processing place where they're sending it off with prices and stuff and all the kitties hanging around this opening. I would do this page a little at a time and just have a lot of fun with it. And then, oh my gosh, look at all the cats and all the fish bones. <laughs> and she's just trying to get through. Again, it's one of those typical dreams where I just, uh, I can't get through anything. And you can see, there's the edge of her room. So this is just dreaming. She's just getting through cats and fish bones. And her cat's pretty happy. He's just here with his personal fish. So lots of opportunities to color kitties of all different kinds. 
and all different fish bones. And there's the edge of her room again with her sleeping. So we're once again reminded that this is all a dream and a very strange one at that. But it does have borders. So there's a room, there's a room, there's a room. So it has a border. It's just her dream is filling up. But this is the first time we've seen the whole room again since the beginning. The dream is filling up the room, but we're back in the room again. We're grounded. So we're in the room, we know, with some wild, crazy dream. But we're not actually, we aren't in the dream anymore. We're, we're looking in now. Oh, because the dream's getting smaller. So we're back in the room before where the dream got bigger and bigger and then we got sucked into the dream and then we were in the dream for all these pages. Now we're coming out of the dream and the dream's getting smaller. Looks like she's tossing and turning again. But look how everything has sort of gone kind of skewed. Probably, you know, that windstorm that came up that first started her dream, everything is still knocked over and stuff. But her dream self has finally caught her kitty. And I think it's cool that her dream self looks solid in the dream, but coming out of the dream, she's transparent. Now, Kitty is solid. So Kitty maybe escaped into the dream, and then she had to go into the dream to chase him down and finally catch him. But he was just going for some midnight snack. <laughs> and here she is coming out of all of these kitties and seafood. That's a really cool concept. I can... Definitely, honestly, say I've never seen a coloring page like this. <laughs> never seen a book like this. And here we are. She's curled up in bed. She finally has her kitty. She's solid and ethereal. No, solid. What is this line? Oh, I think it's just, it's part of the shadows. I think she's drawn a line where there might be a shadow because of the light source because the window's open. So maybe there's a light source or maybe these lines are still receding dream. You can do what you want. You can white them out, but I think I might use them as sort of a, a light source where this part's more shadowy and this part's more light. I'll have to look at this more and see what I wanna do with these lines. It's very cool. And look. Her, there's the, the air balloons, the fish, the kites, the kitty. Look, there's, there's just some regular old pictures, but a lot of this has to do with her dreams. There's the lily pads. <laughs> and they're both sleeping. Kitty's sleeping and she's sleeping. Over here, pictures, you have the trees and the birds. <laughs> And then finally, we have this giant wallpaper page, which I would use to test my mediums, honestly. What's on the back of this? Nothing. So probably would here, especially on this page, test mediums to see what works so that I wouldn't bleed through on this. But again, having a bad day, stressed out, anxiety, brain won't stop. This is a nice, like, just got to color this kitty and then I'll just color this kitty and I'll just color this kitty. And who cares what it looks like because it's just wallpaper. So just um, do it in anything. But definitely this page I'm going to use to test mediums on these kitties and see what I like best. This might be the first book I've ever tested mediums before starting in a page. <laughs> now, the last part of this book is that she has... Cl Dreamweaver clues and basically these are just page names surveying the scene curious on the edge of a dream climbing into a dreamer's world so these are the pages that we saw and at the end safe snug and slumbering so um maybe they she calls them clues because it might tell you might give you clues on how you want to color them so like is there anything that tells prowling through wildflowers that's beyond the sweeping carp streamers? So those are probably the um, wind socks dropped on a locomotive's path. Yeah. So maybe in case you can't understand what the page is, these are, these are, these are clues. Wandering through the fisherman's catch amongst a melee of seafood lovers and plucked from a feline skirmish. So that was a skirmish of felines. So, you know, um, I, they all could be, also could be clues to how you find the kitty. 
So where is the kitty? Climbing a grand ascent. You might look there. Roaming towards shelter. Might be ways to find the kitty. But I also think there are clues in deciphering what's going on in the page. So that's Dreamweaver. So this, I have two books. I didn't do a flip through of this one. There are flip throughs of this one, but I don't want to do a flip through of this one. So if you want to see what's happening to this little explorer, you can find some really good flip throughs on YouTube. Just search for Kirby Rosanna's Alien Worlds. But um, I want to be surprised. So anyone who wants to join me in this book, being surprised as we go along and figure out where we are and find, see new sites. Ooh, I almost saw the next page. See new sites. Direct message me. And you can join me and Tammy too on our little, our little Instagram chat group. And just have fun with us. And we're just, this one we are going through beginning to end. Now, if you just want to color in this book and you don't want to beginning to end, then this project wouldn't be for you. But we are definitely not looking ahead and just going through it as from the perspective of this traveler. This book, however, is going to be this hashtag. And um, if you use this hashtag, I take it as your consent that I can ooh and ah about your page all over the place and put it into the update videos. So um, because I just feel this book has a lot to offer for people in the way of soothing our anxious brains. Um, my, my biggest, my whole reason for being here is to connect with people and to help bring about a sense of peace, at least while we're together. Um, because so many of us use, as well as I do, use this hobby as a way of soothing our anxious brains and working through depressions and ill health and injury and all kinds of stuff. Many of us, especially you see it in those yearly recaps, coloring has really done something very important for our physical and mental health. It helps us get through tough times. And it also is a creative expression for those of us that maybe can't draw or haven't done you know, much in that way, but we can color, we can sit with these beautiful mediums and it's a gorgeous, wonderful, supportive community. So the community is what drew me in when I started coloring and started subscribing to all your videos. And then a year and a half ago, I was like, I want to be a bigger part of this community. And I started doing the YouTube videos. And that's my whole goal in this. My whole reason for doing this, my purpose is so that is to find people like myself who we don't go out and socialize anymore because it's just going out and hanging out and you know partying or a social event it sounds like a lot of effort and a kind of a little bit of a living hell I prefer to actually I like being alone I'm very much a hermit but I like and I, I like interacting with people in in short bursts and not so many at a time and this works for me and the connections I've made with so many of you, I consider you my friend. And I want to share this hobby with you, but you can't come sit here in my living room with me in color. And although that would be nice, I wouldn't want to do that all the time either. Because again, I like to be alone and you do too. So let's connect in this way. And when I come across a book like this, that's so uh, good for your mental health and so dare I say dreamy, but, you know, accessible, easy to color, and just, I don't know, pulls me out of my worries and cares. And it's, it's a type of meditation. As a Buddhist nun, I do a lot of meditation, and that's my main practice. But coloring in books like this are a sort of meditation. You don't have to think so hard, but you can color something that's telling a story of restoration and completion and health. Um, and I love that. So join me with this hashtag. Every month I'll take a peek at it. I'll keep a running reel. And when I do updates on my progress, I'll show all your progress and we'll have a great time. So join me in these two project books if you'd like. If not, you can just watch how we do and take care of yourself. Be safe. Bye-bye. Thank you.